Let's take a look at correlation. Now there are two types of correlation, positive and negative. Now on the left here, this is an example of positive correlation because we can generally see a pattern that as the X values increase, the Y values increase. There is correlation because we can draw a line of best fit through all of these dots and all of these dots are fairly close to the line. If all of these dots are fairly close to a line, then we have correlation. And if this line goes up, it's positive correlation. But sometimes you don't even need to draw the line in like in the second one here. We can clearly see that there is a trend going down here. So the line going down means this is negative correlation. As we increase our value for X, we are decreasing our value for Y. So as X increases, Y decreases positive. X increases and Y increases, but for negative, X increases, but Y decreases. Again, if we draw a line of best fit, so a line cutting through as many of the dots as possible, we can see that the line goes down, so that is negative correlation, and we know there's correlation because all of the dots here are quite close to that line. Now, drawing scatter graphs um, is something you need to know, so we I've been asked to create a scatter graph for age and IQ. So what I would do here is we need two axes, one for age and one for IQ. Now, often you're told which axis to plot, um, which set of values. I would normally plot on the horizontal, the, the more consistent um, data set. So what I mean is here, I would do age because the age is simply going up in ones. It's kind of nice and easy. And so I do age across the bottom and IQ being the less predictable going up the side. So for age, we just need to be careful with the scale. We just need to make sure that we can fit in. Uh, I probably start from, well, you could start from five if you wanted to, probably best not to start exactly at six, but maybe just start at five uh, and go all the way up to 15. Or quite often you see this in a graph so it just means that the zero to four has been cut out and we're starting at five, just so that you don't have a big blank gap at the start. Um, and I'll probably just go up in one. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, provided there's enough space. Otherwise you might have to go up in twos. And for the IQ, we probably go up in, well, it depends again how much space you've got, but you definitely wouldn't go up in ones. Otherwise we're going all the way up to 142. You probably go up in uh, tens, May, 20s might be might be better. Again, it depends how many uh, squares you've got available. So this is what I've done. I've done my age going across in groups of two. Um, so if I want a seven year old, then that's halfway between six and eight. And I've done my IQ going up in blocks of 20. Again, what I don't like about this particular graph though, is all this blank space here. So what we, what you can often just do a funny little symbol here and then just uh, start here at six. And, and then all of this data just pulled across and just, just saves all this wasted space. So the key thing to do is just be careful with your scale. Just take a look at the numbers. So here we're going from, well, zero to just past 15. So maybe take it to 16. So just think about the uh, amount of space you've got horizontally to fit those values in. And the same for the, um, vertical values as well. Here we're going up to 142. So depending on the amount of space you've got available, you might want to think about going up in fives, tens, twenties, fifties, one hundreds. But I think for this uh, data set here, because we're going from uh, zero to, well, just over 142, going up in twenties would seem fairly reasonable.